All right, controversial video here. Ice and water, does it go over or under your apron? Let's keep this a friendly discussion in the comments down below. If you're a contractor, let me know, do you guys go under or over? Uh, there's, okay, let, let me clear a few things here. If you, this is assuming you're using ice and water. This home doesn't have ice and water, so it doesn't necessarily matter if you went over the top or under. The, you know, it could be good and bad either way, but I'm referring to ice and water since most people, reputable contractors are gonna use ice and water. And let's assume that it's going to be warm during the install. Let's also point out if you have gutters or not, that could also make a, a factor here. But I've done videos in the past. People want to comment. The way I'm thinking about this, when the water comes down, if I'm using ice and water, I want it to stick on top of my apron. So I'll put my apron down, then the ice and water down, low enough to cover any fasteners holding the apron down, and seal to it. So if you have water backing up, water waking up, it's not going to get under because it's so stuck to it. It'll be on top of the ice and water. What we got going on here, let me switch camera around. By the way, I'm out here because of a leak coming in over this window right here. Owner said not often. I gotta be careful, there's some vicious dogs back here too. Uh, there's a doggy door, so they're just running around getting me. So I actually got up over here, walked the roof with my ladder and then lowered it down over the edge and using my handy dandy trusty little awesome and genius idea ladder standoff to be able to stay off the roof here. And look up under here for you guys what we're looking at. So the leak, let me make sure the dogs stay back inside for a minute, it was coming in, not all the time, in this area. So from my opinion, there's several things. If you have a larger soffit overhang, that's gonna rule out a lot of, is it a window siding issue or a roof issue? If it's got a large soffit and it's still leaking, it's probably more pointing to an issue with the roof. If there is no soffit, and you've got a strong predominant wind and it only leaks during say in this case we're in a north facing window when the you know low pressure is whipping around from the north and blowing to the south rain could come down in here and get up into this area which that could be more of a siding issue this is only about a foot overhang not big so we're going to start with some things here any obvious damage any keyway stacked any nails in a keyway allowing water to drip in. I didn't see any of that without getting too crazy into it. We had another rain band come through, sun just poked out. So I'm gonna read shoot the video here. Cause that was getting poured on. So let's look up under here first. Looking up under here, luckily I got two pieces of metal that come together and I can show you something important with that. This is pretty, pretty dirty up under here. You can see it's got water in there. It's wicking back up under. Why is it wicking up under there? There's a nail right there. It's rusting out a little bit. Point being is water's getting under there. What's happening now is it's, well, let's just address why it's getting under there. There's not a lot of an overhang. If this overhung a little bit more, it would have heated up and kind of sunk down, giving it an edge to drip off of. It's not doing that. It's somewhat a semi-low slope. It's a 412. But then down here at the bottom, it has a little bit of a flare out coming up. It's like the edge metal is raising up a little bit by the way this is drip edge not apron let's clear that too right now so there's a drip not apron but because it's coming up it's not hanging down causing a drip to run off of it's probably wicking back up under as well as that slight hump water coming in where a keyway is and it could be running laterally and then off of the nearest lap a starter wherever it may be and then at that point what it's going to do is run back up over the top of the drip edge in some areas if the conditions are just right and then it's behind and under the edge metal well what happens if it's behind and under the edge metal wipe my fingers off here real quick grab my phone switch hands and look up under here well it's gonna run down off of the paper they've got onto the deck surface well this is osb and you should not be able to do that without getting a splinter that is rotting out on the bottom edge now I don't know how much rot damage there is, but OSB is like a sponge. It's gonna start soaking up under, and I, my guess is it's because it's raised up slightly, and it's got paper underneath. If you had ice and water and it was clean, dry conditions, and you put the ice on top of this and it sealed down good, it wouldn't get under there. So the other thing we're looking at here with this, now that we know that water's getting under there, how could it be possibly getting into the window seal? clear dogs I don't want to get my ankle bit off well I happen to just look up under here because I have seen leaks because of this if you get water up into here it can sometimes channel just right 
and get under here. And I know that personally, because one day I was pressure washing my house, cleaning all the algae and soffit off, and I got water up into the uh, soffit, uh, vented soffit here, and it flows right on over that way. So when I was building my new addition, I made sure I have it a ever gently so slight down. I might have builders say I was doing it wrong, but if it gets wet, it's gonna slowly trickle this way and not go back. Because what we got going on right here, that sub decking, subsiding, there's a piece here. You can try to get my finger back in there and pull that paper. It's got Tyvek on it, but that's wet. That deck board is soaking wet. There's water under here, look at that. All up under there. So that tells me it's not so much a wind-driven rain blowing at it, but a combination of low slope, in my opinion, paper under when it should have been on top. Well, paper on top's not gonna do much of anything. If you had ice and water stuck down on top, it would stop it from flowing back. Pardon me. All right, so if you're a contractor, here's a little discussion part, let me know which way you guys go, do you put your ice and water down and wrap it over the fascia board? If you go down first and you go over the fascia board, that can be good. I'm not gonna dispute the fact. If that point, you know, why even use apron? I mean, apron's gonna be more rigid and hold up a whole lot longer than say ice and water will. But if you're gonna go over the fascia, fascia how far down are you gonna go? Because if you wrap it now with aluminum, it's going to just be trapping any run back and flowing over behind your fascia now. Also, if this is uh, not a new construction home and you've got fascia, you're not gonna put ice and water right on top of the fascia. It's gonna look horrible. Let's say you've got a gutter up here. Are you gonna take the gutter down to put ice and water down to then put your fascia or how are you gonna lap it? I mean, to me, none of that makes logical, obvious sense. So everybody has their own opinion. That's my opinion and why I personally put the apron down, fasten it the way it needs to be and make sure the ice and water is plenty low to cover the fasteners on a warm, dry day to seal it down and then proceed on with everything else. You also wanna make sure that if your apron, drip edge, whatever you're using, goes on top of this and not short. Let me turn around, get a close up on here. One more thing I noticed, looking here, I mean, you can see that wear mark right here where that drip edge is rubbing. That's only at best a quarter inch that that is rubbing and lapping. So anything coming down on this has a quarter inch to get on top of the fascia, aluminum fascia metal versus waking back up under there. And due to surface tension, even though they give this little flared out hem, it can still wick up under here. This isn't a big leak, it's very minor, but it's been going on for a long time. Honestly, looking at that right under there was a dead giveaway evidence of water flowing back up under things it's not supposed to and getting that wet. I mean, you can see the drips right there. If you didn't have such a big overhang, if all this is done the other way and you roll that out, that's when I would look at wind-driven rain and weather patterns and when you're actually seeing it leak in. <clears throat> this, if you had uh, apron, apron, why it's better on the bottoms is not so much that it doesn't have the extra lip coming out. I mean, that will restrict gutter cleaning, gutter capturing effect, but it has a larger up the roof deck surface, a slight bit more. So it gives you more room to fasten it, more room for water protection and ice and water. So like I said, down below, let's have a friendly discussion. Keep the comments nice. Ice and water first, then apron, or apron first, and then ice and water. Also, if you're one of the contractors that says, take the gutter down and then do that, I'd really like to know. I mean, I've never seen anyone take a gutter down to put ice and water down over into the fascia. And even if you were to take the gutter off to do that, why would you do that? Wouldn't you want it going in the gutter? I mean, sure don't want it going over the fascia and leaving it exposed because that's just going to look horrible. Just some thoughts. Uh, make sure I didn't forget anything here. Oh, so we'll fix. This needs to be driven down. It also needs to be sealed off. Probably come down on here. I don't know the age of the roof. Um, I know the people that live here, but uh, I don't know how old it is. It's not going to be a fun, easy repair to remove a couple of rows, to replace any possible bad wood, put an apron down, and then ice and water and tuck under your old paper a little ways under. None of that's going to be fun to do. But something needs to be addressed so you don't have a whole uh, subsiding out here behind the siding rot out and eventually working its way down. Uh, the, the higher the steep slope, the steeper the slope, the more runoff you'll have, providing when they framed it, 
the rafter tails coming down. I've seen some homes where the two by fours, two by sixes, fascia boards, whatever they're using are up pretty high. Then it causes what I kind of call a ski jump. It goes flat. Well, when you put your edge metal or apron down, it has a flat spot. Well, when water comes down a steep slope and hits that flat, that's not good because that's when you get it waking under. Again, that's why it's important in my thought to have a good solid piece of apron, ice and water on top, stuck down to it. So anyway, that's just my thoughts. Like I said, friendly discussion. Let me know what your thoughts are. I know some manufacturers might say and specify a certain thing a certain way. I will say that in the past, I don't remember what brand it was, but I was reading their packaging on how to do their starter courses and I kind of disagree with what they're saying. It was to add a random offset in it. And yeah, that can be beneficial on mixing the pattern up so you don't see it on the roof. But the downside is, more importantly is, is this going to affect the longevity of the life in a leak? Well, if you are installing nails in a consistent pattern and you throw in an oddball offset, that's going to put a nail in that area. Anywhere that offset is over time, you potentially risk it rusting out, causing a leak. Sorry, my hand's getting shaky. It's starting to rain again. Um, lost my train of thought. So yeah, oh, that's what I was gonna say. So when people say, oh, don't listen, or you gotta listen to the manufacturer, or who you know, why do you think you know better? Well, the people that like to say that you can never be smarter than your teacher, I strongly disagree with that statement. You know, so then who taught that teacher? Oh, the other teacher. Oh, okay, well, who taught that teacher? At some point, the first teacher had to learn somehow, and it's called using common sense and knowing how things flow or how things go or how gravity works or why the rain falls from the sky and where does it flow. So anyway, you may disagree with what I say. Another little thought to consider is certain shingles, certain brands, certain manufacturers, why do they make them a certain way? Hmm, could there possibly be a reason something could wear out in a certain amount of time? Hmm, maybe they need to buy it again. Just a thought to consider. Anyway, I gotta get, it's starting to rain again. I got more to do. I appreciate it if you give it a quick little tap of the thumbs up button. I do this for you guys. This is an extra, what, 12 minutes out of my day for you guys. So I hope you get some benefit out of it. It does help me check the link out for this ladder standoff. By the way, I know I don't have three points of contact. I don't even have two. You don't need to take time to comment that down below. Just smash the thumbs up button. I appreciate it. Until next time, be safe. See you on the next one.